And because my words shall hiss forth, many of the Gentiles shall say, A Bible, a Bible, we have got a Bible, and there cannot be any more Bible. But thus saith the Lord God, O fools, they shall have a Bible, and it shall proceed forth from the Jews, mine ancient covenant people. And what thank they the Jews for the Bible which they receive from them? O ye Gentiles, have ye remembered the Jews, mine ancient covenant people? Nay, but ye have cursed them, and have hated them, and have not sought to recover them. But behold, I will return all these things upon your own heads, for I the Lord have not forgotten my people. Thou fool that shall say, A Bible, we have got a Bible, and we need no more Bible. There's an old Jewish proverb that says, He who finds a faithful friend finds a treasure. These are not mere words for Latter-day Saint and Jewish leaders who have spent the last decade cultivating strong relationships. It's been thrilling, fulfilling to be able to see this continuous stream of contact between our two communities and to understand how we're members of different faith communities, but there's so much that binds us together. We're so similar in so many ways. In dialogue between Catholics, Christian, Protestants, and Jews, you know, the issues of the teaching of contempt, uh, the supersessionist idea where Christianity has become the new Israel and that the Jewish people have lost that context. That's not an issue that we have to worry about with the Mormons. They fully believe in the enduring relationship of Jews and God. That they are too a part of it, but there can be more than one covenant. I don't think that's an issue. So now some of the basic theological claims in Mormonism that I think bear... Um, affinities to Kabbalistic ideas. One is the notion of priesthood um, and the ordinances thereof. So the, the, the idea of the Aaronic priesthood or priesthood of Aaron, the priesthood of Melchizedek, and the priesthood of Enoch. Um, these sort of three levels of priesthood and the emphasis on religious ritual having an impact on the divine realm and having in response to that, an impact on, in the cosmic realm. For Kabbalists, Jews maintain the fabric of being itself. They maintain the universe through their religious practices. There are affinities between that and um, Mormon notion, notions of priesthood ordinances. Now, as the scripture says, no man shall know the day or the hour of his coming, speaking of the second coming. But we know precisely when Christ will come down and save the Jews. We will be able to pinpoint the day pretty close once the three and a half year period starts. This second coming event when Christ saves the Jews is not the second coming event where we can't know the date or time. That verse, I believe, is referring to the main event, that third appearance we will be getting to shortly. So I believe that we can know when this event is going to occur, when Christ saves the Jews, and we as saints can be prepared for it. But in harmony with when the Jews are saved by Christ, as he touches his foot on the Mount of Olives, it unleashes many of the last day's calamities we so often hear about, 